by now, you know the names by heart. Washington, Jefferson, Franklin, Adams, Lafayette, the stars of the American Revolution, the men who figured it all out, how to create a new government, how to beat down the world's greatest power, how to demand freedom and then get it. But I'll bet there's a name you don't know, important, heroic, vital to the cause of freedom. His name was James. Over time, he was James Armistead Lafayette. James sure did fool them redcoats. He had them thinking that he was a waiter. They just talked up all their grand plans about how they were gonna send old George Washington to his grave. James pocketed that information, then delivered it directly to the Marquis de Lafayette, the French hero of the Revolutionary War. That's why James is an American treasure. That's why it's only fitting he changed his name after he won his own freedom. James Armistead Lafayette. If you take a hard look at the middle of the Revolutionary War, it's almost impossible to believe the Americans actually won. For most of the war, the Colonials were outmanned by the British Army, which at the time was the world's greatest power. They were often outmaneuvered and outsmarted. They lost battle after battle. The United States of America was nearly destroyed before it was ever created. To win this war, the Americans needed perseverance, a sense of cunning and a powerful desire for freedom. They also needed help to discover the battle plans of the British Army. The best way was to find a way to spy on the British and gather that information. The Americans had such a man. He was known at that time as James, a man in slavery. During the Revolutionary War, many enslaved Africans worked for the British with promises of freedom at war's end. But James asked his owner for permission to work instead for French General Marquis de Lafayette, who came to America to help the young country defeat the British. Naturally, when you think about what's happening in the English colonies, the American colonies at that point in time, one naturally would think, uh, since the Americans were not offering the promise of freedom, that everyone would take off and willingly support the British. So to find someone like James, who was uh, not working for them, uh, would be quite surprising and would have probably never occurred to the British generals that he ends up spying. The British General Cornwallis had marched his soldiers from the Carolinas to Virginia. They had taken over Portsmouth and set fire to Richmond. Cornwallis put hundreds of slaves into play, using them in support roles, digging, hauling, cooking, and serving food to British soldiers. When Lafayette set up headquarters in New Kent, Virginia, he decided to do the same thing. The American forces um, led by General Lafayette uh, in Virginia were stumped because they could not get good information about what was going on behind the British lines. Here you have an enslaved person who's coming in contact with them in New Kent County and asked his master to go and serve with this man. The first success came in a battle against former patriot and now traitor, Benedict Arnold. With the information relayed by their valuable new spy, the Americans ambushed Arnold's British camp and came close to capturing Arnold himself. In July of 1781, James then found a way to infiltrate the military camp of General Cornwallis. Passing himself off as a waiter, he gathered significant information that included the number of ships and boats in and around the Hampton Roads area, including Yorktown. Using James's information, American and French forces positioned the French Navy on the Chesapeake Bay, bottling up the York River. Washington and his troops then marched south to Williamsburg to join Lafayette, where they routed the British by land and sea. The brilliant and heroic efforts of James Lafayette won him little reward at first. Even though he helped to win freedom for the people of America, those very same people refused to give James his own freedom even after five years of trying. If he had fought for the British, 
he would have won his freedom. But because he sided with the Americans and and because of the role that he played as a spy, uh, he's not going to automatically be awarded his freedom. It's going to take a petition some years down the road, a special petition, especially for him to the Virginia legislature uh, in order for him to apply for and eventually win uh, his freedom. The Marquis de Lafayette, considered a great hero of the war, personally recommended James be considered a free man in America. In 1784, the great French general wrote to the Virginia General Assembly, his intelligence from the enemy's camp were industriously collected and more faithfully delivered. He perfectly acquitted himself with some important commissions I gave him and appears to me entitled to every reward his situation can admit of. On January 9, 1786, James finally gained his freedom. One of his first acts was to add to his name that of the general who inspired him and pleaded for his freedom. James the Slave became James Lafayette, an American hero of the Revolutionary War. 